Hey, John here. I finally got some decent lighting over my work area and my camera boom mounted so I can do some diagramming. As always, I like to open by thanking all my Patreons, especially the VIPs. But today I want to talk about priority routing networks and what they mean, why they exist, and how they get created when we write Verilog code. So here is our priority routing network, and here's one way that you can create one, you know, with an if, else, if, else, if kind of a thing like this. Now let's look at this. This cascade of multiplexers over here, and I've drawn it like stair steps like this to make it really obvious what's going on. This is your priority routing network. And this is the classic example of how you can create one in Verilog. Now, this, of course, depends on your compiler and your compiler options that you're using and so on. So, I mean, maybe all if-then-elses don't always turn into a priority routing network, depending on your tools, but they can. And you can also get these other ways when you're writing your code. Uh, obviously, the question mark operator is the same thing as an if-then-else, and as we'll see, the case statements are also uh, uh, the type of thing that you can end up with this multiple input multi-way decision that you would want to make. You could probably build this also with a multiplexer that has more inputs and use these three bits as some form of an address. I mean, there's many different ways to do this. This is a priority routing network, and they do crop up in your applications. And we need to be careful that we don't create these by accident. Uh, you can, and you can ignore this, and I usually do. When I write my designs in Verilog, I start by writing them so they're the most intuitive to me as a programmer. And when I think about when I come back two years, three years from now and want to play around with my program, well, I still understand it then. This isn't about being as cute and creative as possible. That, <laughs> that was what I did in my teens. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's about what what about the next guy especially when the next guy is me <laughs> make sure that i can keep understanding it my point is if you write simple code sometimes you end up with a circuit that's not very efficient this is not the most efficient way for a circuit to be built to do this sometimes it is depending on the conditions and stuff like that and sometimes you can't do anything about it but uh, we need to understand this because in Verilog, when you when you when you run your compiler to synthesize your code, it'll say at the bank at the end. Usually, uh, I've never seen one that doesn't give you like a worst path, worst worst propagation path through your circuit is blah, and it tells you. Usually, it's some carry chain in one of your adders or something, assuming you have adders. But it could also be a propagation through a routing network like this. And that's why we need to understand this, because that worst case propagation delay is what determines the maximum operating frequency or the lowest latency that your design, your circuit, can perform at. And if it turns out that it's through a priority routing network like this, we need to be able to recognize how these are created and how we can play around with the code to get rid of them if we want to down the road. Now, it's a little bit too early to talk about optimizing our Verilog code in this particular series, but I need to be able to refer to routing networks as we go, so I want to make sure we all understand exactly what they are and kind of where they can come from. So this is an example that uh, some uh, synthesis tools are going to generate when you have this cascade of is, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, and so on. Why? Well, this is the easiest way to generate code <laughs> from this kind of an expression. Remember that all conditions in an if have to resolve, no matter how complicated the thing is in these parentheses, down to a single Boolean bit that is true or false. If whatever this is is true, then it, we are going to do this. If it's false, we move on our merry way to do whatever comes after this if, which is another if, which is another if, which is finally the else down here. Okay? So one way to do this is to create a multiplexer just for this top if right here. And you take this Boolean condition, calculate it with whatever gates you need, and then run it to the address input on a multiplexer. When this input is a 1, 
take whatever this value is here, what the, this expression can be arbitrarily complex, tons of gates over here, doesn't matter. Whatever the output is that you're assigning in, in the body of this if is on the output of this uh, multiplexer. And in the true input, like I said, you take whatever D is and you connect it up like so. All right. Now, this is a really simplified diagram. Normally, you don't have it quite so simple when you're writing your, a real program. You have a whole lot of statements in here, and they may be doing all kinds of crazy things. That's okay. It just might mean that you have more than one routing network at the same time, all controlled from this A. Okay? So, when A is true, take whatever D is, set it to Y in this simple example. If it's not true, A is then zero, and it takes its input from this mux over here, which is the out of this expression right so when B is true get the input from address input number one which is E so you're going to say E propagate it through here because it's going to the zero input of this one has to be false if we're even down here doing this and E now gets propagated over to Y like so if B is false and A is false, we fall down to this else. We ask, is C true or false? If C is true, we take F and we propagate it over to Y like so. If C is false, we fall down here and we propagate G over to Y like this. So this, if then else, can be built using this circuit here. Now, it could probably also be built with other circuits. And like I said, this is super simple. It may be that your, your uh, synthesis tool could compress this down to a symbol a single uh, mux and it also depends on the fpga you're using it may be that some fpgas actually have big muxes inside so you don't have to make these cascades right it, it, that's why we have different fpgas different vendors different families of chips but in the simplest of case this is a priority routing network that propagates these values through these multiplexers and with that I think we're done. Short, simple, and sweet. That's what a priority routing network is. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.